Okay, we're on to the next question, which is one for the PERT chart. So the, this company has this project to leave you for house. Now you almost don't need to look at what of these tasks are, just how each one depends on each other. And you're going to be filling in this chart called a PERT chart. So the first thing to do is to decide which task goes in which box. And this is like the precedence tables that you did at National 5 Applications of Maths. So our first task is task A, and that has no tasks coming before it. That's followed by B, which depends on A, and C depends on B. You see, they've made it quite straightforward for us. And then, depending on task C, are D and E. And they can go in either order. You can either have D going here or E D going here. It doesn't matter which way around it goes. So this is D and this is E. So now we need to see what depends on D. Well, depending on D is F. So this will be F. No. We also need to see what depends on E, and that is tasks, uh, task G. Now, what task depends on uh, F and G? Well, you can see that, that that is task H. So this is G and this is H. Finally, the tasks that depend on H are I and I and J. And it doesn't matter which one goes in which box. So now we fill in these middle boxes, which are the durations. So now we're going to do the forward scan. We always start at zero, in this case this means zero hours, and zero plus three is three, three plus seven is ten, ten plus four is fourteen, so fourteen goes in both of these boxes, fourteen plus one is fifteen, fourteen plus two is sixteen. Now for task H, we need to be a little bit careful. 15 plus 1 is 16, 16 plus 4 is 20. We take the later of those two, which is 20. So task H cannot start until 20 hours at the earliest. 20 plus 6 will be 26, and that will go in both of these boxes. Now we're going to do the backwards scan. It's important to remember that we need to have the same number in both of these end boxes. 26 plus 3 is 29, 26 plus 2 is 28, we choose the later of these two, which is 29. So the entire project will take a minimum of 29 hours to do. Backwards scan, be aware uh, there's a mistake in the TJ textbook, gets this wrong. 29 take away 3 is 26, uh, 29 take away 2 is 27. 26 is smaller, so we take 26 here. 26 take away 6 is 20, so this is 20. And again, 26 take away 6 is 20 here. 20 take away 1 is 19. And 20 take away 4 is 16. 16 take away 2 is 14. 19 take away 1 is 18. Again, you take the smaller of those two numbers, so it has to be 14. And then we can see these ones as well. So usually, you, or quite often, you can check you've done this correctly just by looking at the fact that numbers add up. So for example, 10 plus 4 is 14. That will be true for any of the tasks which are on the critical path. So 14 plus 2 is 16, 16 plus 4 is 20 and so on. These are the tasks with no flow time. The other ones do have flow time. So 14 plus 1 is not 19, etc. So now we're on to part B. The roofing company works for nine hours a day on the job. How many days do they need? So look, let's look at how long the project would take. 29 hours. So we need to do 29 divided by 9. This is three and a bit, but they want the number of days it takes, so we have to say four days. And that's it. Now we're being asked to produce 
our Gantt chart using our PERT chart. So on the vertical axis, we will have labels for each of the tasks, and we just about have the space to fit them all in. So going from task A to J, you can see we can only just fit them in with, with space in between them. So now looking at task A, the task A starts at zero and finishes at three hours. So our bar is going to be the first three boxes in the grid. So a little hint here from the SQA is that you use some kind of shading or hatching on the bars of your Gantt chart. And the reason for that is when your exam paper is scanned in, it doesn't disappear. If you just draw an outline of the rectangle, it might not be visible to the person marking it. But obviously don't spend a huge amount of time coloring in. It's not a good use of time in the exam. So task B starts at three and carries on for seven hours. So we have to shade in seven boxes starting, on, uh, starting at three. Now I think that the uh, potentially the scale here is a bit confusing. So you can see uh, you can see that t one is in the middle of the box, which isn't how you normally do a scale. However, it's how this scale is done on this Gantt chart. Uh, so just. One way to check is make sure you use the correct number of boxes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, boxes for seven hours. And it finishes over box 10, although you could argue that's the 10th hour. So it's from hours nine until 10. So with some care, you can complete the rest of the Gantt chart, uh, hopefully fairly easily. And when it's finished, it should look like this. And for good measure here is the uh, SQA marking scheme, which is slightly neater than my version.